here in the Florida Keys, folks are drying out after feeling the effects of Elsa less than 24 hours ago. Chanel, we received more than four inches of rain by noon here yesterday. For perspective, that is about what Key West averages for the month of July. The Key West Airport registered 3.67 inches of rain. That is an all-time total for the area in a 24-hour span. Wind gusts, as Craig was mentioning earlier, reached 70 miles an hour or higher. That right there really effectively shut down a very popular spot for tourists here. The streets were empty for a period of time. Conditions, as you can see behind me right now, have cleared up significantly, but we're still dealing with some of the residual impacts from yesterday, specifically at Key West Airport, where they had several flights already canceled this morning. Some more were delayed as folks right now just trying to get home. As for those strong winds we saw, those have now migrated north with, nine, with winds being able to extend 90 miles from the center of this storm. And that, guys, as we're keeping a close and power outages, 12,000 so far registered in the state of Florida. That is a figure that is expected to rise significantly throughout the course of the day. Chanel and Craig, back to you. All right, Sam, thank you. For more on where Elsa is right now, where that storm is headed next, we turn to NBC's Bill Cairns. Bill is in for Al today. What's the word, buddy? Oh, good morning. Uh, the storm took a little jog to the left last night, and that helped out some people, but in the days ahead, not some others. So let's get into it and show you what we're dealing with. That little jog kind of spared the Tampa area, the St. Pete, the Clearwater Beach. It kept all the strongest winds offshore. That's why we're not showing you any damage from the Tampa area. That's great. That's fantastic for them. They're going to deal with some squalls today, and they'll have to maybe isolate tornadoes in Florida. That'll be the worst of it. So the storm itself is now heading up towards the Cedar Key area, the Horseshoe Beach. We expect landfall sometime late this morning, maybe early this afternoon. It's going to make landfall right near what they call the Big Bend there of Florida. And then it will be a big rainstorm after that. That'll be the biggest impact. If we're going to get more significant damage out of this, life-threatening weather, it would be with flash flooding. And that little jog to the left now is taking this path a little closer to the mid-Atlantic, a little closer to New York City, Long Island, and also southern New England. So if you have plans Friday morning, especially in this area, we could be in for some really squally type weather, heavy rain for that early morning commute. So here's to the warnings and watches. They now extend warnings up through South Carolina and Georgia. And even though the storm is going to be weakening, only 40, 50 mile per hour winds, those stronger gusts along the coastal areas will be causing some issues. And as far as the heavy rain goes, today as the storm makes landfall, North Florida areas and around the Georgia border. Then those flood prone areas in southern Georgia and especially around South Carolina, Charleston, the Savannah areas are always getting flooding. It seems like when they get heavy rain from these events, 10 million people are impacted by this guy. So that little jog saved us in Tampa and St. Yeah. Pete. But Friday morning, that storm could be right over the top of New York City. Mm. Oh, all right. Bill Cairns will come back to you in just a bit. Thank you, sir. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.